Kia ora. Welcome to Women in Data Science Auckland 2020. This year, we have an online series of talks from women sharing their stories about their work and career contributions across many industries. WITS Auckland is an independent event organised by the University of Auckland Faculty of Engineering to coincide with the annual Global Women in Data Science Conference. I'm Kate Collich, WITS Ambassador, and I'm delighted to be here to help share some of these inspiring talks. Today's speaker is Lee Cooper. Lee has been managing this data science team at the Ministry of Social Development in Wellington for two years. In this talk, she shares some of the work that her team has been doing in the analytics enablement space. Oh, thanks. I'll just wait a couple of seconds. Hi, my name is Lee Cooper. I manage the data science and products team at the Ministry of Social Development in New Zealand here. Um, so a bit of background, MSD or Ministry of Social Development is the lead social uh, sector agency in New Zealand. Uh, so we, we help provide income support, employment related services, superannuation, uh, community organisation funding, etc. cetera. Uh, and data science uh, has always been quite a strong, well, particularly over the last while, a strong part of uh, the way that the Ministry of Social Development do their work. It's a very evidence-based organisation, uh, particularly through the previous government's uh, investment approach and now with um, the focus on wellbeing uh, since we've had our latest Labour-led government. So what I want to talk through today is I just I'll cover off a, an example of something that we're um, refreshing at the moment, and it's a model. Um, so in terms of operational advanced analytics, something tangible we can talk to. Uh, I'm also going to talk about then uh, how we how we look at best practice across um, operational advanced analytics, which is a little bit different to say data science for research, et cetera, uh, and also how we deliver this operational advanced analytics. So, what we've likened it to is a bit of an iceberg. People think of a predictive model or some other type of uh, advanced analytics and um, that's all very great. We create the model, awesome, we're done. Doesn't really work like that in uh, anywhere, um, particularly in an operational sense, but certainly in the social sector. So in terms of this whole tip of the iceberg piece uh, is, is the way we're thinking, thinking of it. Um, what we've tried to do is look a little more holistically at how we um, how we are at best practice in, the, in this operational advanced analytics environment. There's a lot of sort of high level principles, things like the um, data protection and use policy and the algorithm charter. But what we're really trying to do is, is create something that is really tangible and, and makes it easy for our data scientists to be able to implement best practice in the work that they do. So the first example that I'm, the example that I want to talk through is, is what we call the youth service needs model. Um, there's a something like I think it's one in eight um, from the household household labour force labour force survey. Uh, young people when they leave high school uh, become neat, not in education, employment, or training. Uh, so some people may that have fallen uh, into this this neat category may have engagement with other community organisations, things of the like. But there's also a large, uh, large chunk of people um, that may, uh, may really benefit from support that aren't necessarily uh, connected into those community services. So um, MSD actually runs uh, or funds a youth service programme, which, which is community based. So what we're doing with this model is really trying to um, perhaps identify people that, that may benefit from from engaging with the community with the youth service program, but aren't necessarily engaged with the community, the current community services that would help help get them involved in that. So that's where we use predictive modelling to give us a more national perspective on people that may uh, benefit from the program. So basically, there's a model. Uh, there's some data that comes in. We have uh, ASA arrangements with Ministry of Education um, with Oranga Tamariki. Uh, and the data comes in and through that we're able to use a, a predict whether whether someone uh, how long they may spend um, on on essentially an, an MSD benefit 
before the age of 20. So it's really between the eight years of 18 and 20. Uh, and we use that as a way of, of identifying risk of people becoming neat. So you can see that in the diagram there. Uh, and then what you actually see is what a small part that is in a whole uh, bigger system where we get this information out to the, the service providers. Um, they're able to actually speak with young people. Uh, young people are able to say whether they're interested in being part of it or not. Um, and then if they are, then they can, uh, can become part of the service program and have the coaching, et cetera, to help re-engage and, and, you know, and help them you know, possibly get into an employment or training. It's about goal setting and achieving those goals. So within this setting, uh, the wonderful Professor Tim Deere, um, who is a very amazing ethicist, uh, he's often talked about, is, it's not our choice, you know, our choice is not shall we do it, shall we predict, but how shall we predict? So when someone walks in the door and you talk to them um, and you're making decisions about them all the time, um, whether they might need different services, where they might not, that, that is essentially a prediction. So if we're going to use advanced analytics to help with this, then we need to make sure that we're doing it really well uh, and we best practice in place and we're minimizing risk and maximizing the value. So one of the pieces of work that we've been um, working on with Nicholson Consulting is around what we call the model development life cycle best practice guide, bit of a mouthful. Uh, and what that's really broken into is a governance framework and then a really tangible data science guide that, guide that brings together all of those key components and key things that need to be thought about in order to um, in order to deliver advanced analytics into operations, and it does very much have an operational focus. So within, within this, the governance guide, which we're really talking about in terms of providing structure and confidence for decision making, um, we're outlining you know, roles and responsibilities without being specific necessarily to individual people or individual names and position descriptions, but the types of skills that are needed. Um, a lot of templates and things to help with sign off, um, because it can be challenging. Uh, the idea of setting up a technical advisory group, which we've been really doing informally for quite some time anyway. So you might have technical specialists and then privacy specialists, uh, ethicists, et cetera. And then how we uh, identify and manage risk, which of course is very important. And then right down at that practitioner level, which is often where um, maybe there's less tangible support in this sort of space. Uh, we're looking at the, the whole, the methods, the sort of the technical side of things, um, working, and making sure we're integrating well with business units and, and um, identifying the right problems to solve, et cetera, as well as how we actually go about implementing these things, because that's how we're going to get the most value. Um, we're working with all the teams that have provide support in the way that we implement, et cetera, uh, and also with people that are impacted by these particular um, algorithms as well. Uh, and then also there's a, there's a collective responsibility in terms of managing risks and harms. It's not just on uh, some business leader somewhere. Everybody needs to take um, responsibility for making sure we manage risk and harm. One of the one of the tools that sits within this as well, and the MSD has developed through um, through the information group, is a really amazing uh, piece of work around privacy, human rights, and ethic and the ethics. And this gives us a very structured way of working through these kinds of risks and issues. And we engage really early, um, which you can see in this slide. Engage early, it's, uh, it's by design, so they're involved with this right along from the start, flagging anything that may be of concern, helping to identify when we might need to um, engage a little more broadly around um, whether this is the right thing to be doing, how people feel about it, etc. And then at the end, we're, um, there's also the Maori data sovereignty element, um, and data protection use, etc. So then at the end, we're all really comfortable that we know what's going on, and actually it's a really great um, it's a really great relationship as opposed to a them and us type relationship, which I think sometimes data scientists and um, ethicists and privacy people you know, go off into their corners and that's just not the way that we're going to do these things well. Uh, so a specific example of, it, of ethics in action, uh, it's, it's very challenging because this, there's always sort of these trade-offs around um, fairness and um, what, what is your measure of fairness and uh, and how you then potentially trade off accuracy to meet your measure of fairness. And there's a number of different types of views of fairness. One of the things that we realized with this particular piece of work with the use service needs model is that really what we wanted to do, the most important thing here is around predicting that sort of top 10% percent are at the highest risk more accurately. And that's how we've, um, how we've looked at it in terms of the, um, in terms of accuracy, in terms of fairness, and in terms of the way that we've, 
picked the um, outcome we're predicting for. Uh, so this is quite an involved process um, and you may have a trade-off between, um, you know, whether there's a, uh, where the cutoff is, if there's a, a distinct representation um, um, that's similar to the population representation of different ethnicities, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, it's a challenging space, but through the amount of development life cycle work, we have much clearer guidelines around how the best way to implement this is from a technical perspective and how you make those trade-offs and you and you call those out up front and are very um, explicit about it. Another thing that we've really wanted to focus on um, more and more is about how we communicate the use of data and analytics. So earlier I showed you parts of a, a more broad explainer around what's actually happening with the use service system. But this particular slide is around us really wanted to talk about the role of data and analytics and, and how that, why, um, importantly, and how that then um, feeds into the decision making process, which is ultimately, um, ultimately the decision making comes down to both the service provider that's contacting the, the young person and the young person themselves. So there's a human in the loop in that process. And what we found from previous, um, you know, decade, a decade ago, or um, with different data science and operations pieces is that if you don't communicate well, it becomes a bit adversarial with the actual, say it's a case manager or the other people that are using the information. So it's, it's about making sure people are well informed and not swamped in technical jargon. So the other component of, uh, of operational advanced analytics I wanted to talk about is actually what I've, what I've talked about is getting the insights to the people. We might have a really amazing model um, and we think it's super great because the data scientists um, and but it, how do you get that information to the people at the point of decision making um, and there's a few different ways that we go about doing this and it's evolving quite a lot at MSD here so one of the ways um, that we uh, do this for the service piece is actually just about um, presenting a, a user interface that people or an application that people can see the information and interact with which is a fairly standard way of doing these kind of things um, so we've got another example here of an, of an, an embedded application uh, that we've created for a different, um, a different purpose, which is around um, audit lists effectively or recommending services that may be um, applicable to people. The other piece of um, operational advanced analytics that can't be overlooked is the ability to collect additional data that, is, that helps us do a better job of what it is that we're doing. Um, so whether it's the use of the application itself or additional pieces of um, valuable information that are going to help us provide a much better service for people. Um, so that's a really important part of data science in terms of um, operations as well is, is that whole feedback loop and learning loop and making sure that we're understanding how that whole system is working. And that's become a, a big focus for us. And then more and more what we're looking at is actually using APIs, et cetera. Well, we use APIs for our applications, but in terms of, in part of flow, so business flow, um, or uh, to present information to our actual clients, like the people that, the people that um, would be actually be going uh, to some of these services, having, presenting the information to them in a way that they can interact with and tell us about what their preferences are and whether this is a good recommendation or not or whether the course they went to was really helpful for them. So we're getting much more client voice involved, which I think is really important. Um, and so moving to this different API model is helping with that too. So yeah, that's just a bit of a flavor of the um, advanced uh, analytics, operational advanced analytics world in the social sector. We've called it the art and the science because it really is. It's not just about um, a bit of science in a dark corner or data scientists in a dark corner um, cutting code, um, as much as we love that piece as well. But it's really about all of these things coming together um, and forming this bigger, this bigger picture and working really collaboratively. And it's, it's, a, it's an art form. Um, and we want to get it right and we want to get the most value out of it. So thank you.